morning, the nominees for the 73rd annual Golden Globe Awards were announced. The winners will be announced at the ceremony on January 10th, which will once again be hosted by Ricky Gervais. Here are your film nominees. Best Motion Picture Drama, Carol, Mad Max Fury Road, The Revenant, Room, and Spotlight. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit uh, the other day. Very good nominees, no doubt. There's some very solid names up there. Uh, but for me, it's Spotlight. Spotlight, it just, it was such a surprise by, you know, it, it is a smaller film. It feels like a smaller film. It is a smaller film. But I was amazed when I went and watched it how epic it felt, despite the scope and the scale of it. Uh, so a lot of good w ones on there. It's nice to see Mad Max Fury Road getting a nomination, but for me personally, it's Spotlight. You know, I would have said Spotlight because the SAG Awards, it felt like they snubbed the, the actors in particular a little bit, even though they rewarded the ensemble. Here, Spotlight is getting more recognition than I thought it might, so I'm actually going to lean towards The Revenant or even Carol. Carol is just crushing it, particularly with Kate Blanchett and Rooney yeah. Mara, but that movie overall is getting really, really good reviews, and The Revenant is just a film experience unlike every, anything I've ever seen before. Before. So as much as I really did like Spotlight, I would say The Revenant would be my pick. You know what's, is what um, uh, Spotlight is reminding me of? Because you're pointing out it's sweeping everything. It wins Best Ensemble at the SAGs, mm -hmm. and all, or nominated for Best Ensemble at the SAGs, but it's not getting accurate. It reminds me a lot of Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Right. Nominated for 11 Academy Awards, and it won all 11 Academy Awards, but nom not nominated for one single acting award, mm -hmm. and it did the same thing at the SAGs that year. It w they weren't nominated for any of the individual categories, but they won for Best Ensemble. That's the first time I've ever heard Return of the King compared to Spotlight. Yeah, like, well, all the Hobbits got to get Gandalf out of there. <laughs> He's being creepy. Well, what I think it is, though, is that it's, it's so hard to lock down in that movie, like, who the star is like? I thought Leif Schreiber would get a nomination for so Best Supporting Actor. It was so good, yeah. but with Michael Keaton, Ruffalo, Rachel McAdams, they all balance each other out. It's I bet you it's hard to pick. Um, but as far as Best Picture goes, I agree with John. I think that Spotlight is going to clean up. I think Spotlight's going to win at Golden Globes. I think it's going to win at the Oscars. I think it's just one of those movies this year. It's one of my favorites of the year, I'm, and I'm waiting to see if it's going to, as I make my list, if it's going to be the top one, the top three. But it's a phenomenal movie. But I'm. Surprised that Mad Max was nominated. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, it's great. I'm glad that it was. But and but it, it if Golden Globes make I guess makes more sense. I don't think it's going to be nominated for the Oscar. But I think the fact that it was nominated for Golden Globes, that's great. Great for Miller. Great for film in general. That 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 film could get nominated. Um, and The Revenant makes sense to me. But I want to see Carol because I'm hearing a lot about. You it. have ten spots at the Oscars. It Pretend doesn't it, 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 ten potential it. yeah. slots. I think because of this, I, I think agree. Mad Max gets a little bit of momentum and might be nominated for Best Picture. Interesting. I agree. And and the one other. Thing thing about that was the uh, with Mad Max I'm not surprised it's nominated I am surprised that the Golden Globes which are a joke but I am surprised that the Golden Globes put it in the drama category because it seems like anything any movie that isn't straight British period piece, musical or comedy they put under musical or well, comedy pretty, pretty hard to defend how <laughs> Mad Max would be a comedy though but yeah I, 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 I totally understand would. what you're saying wait yeah. until we see the list of nominees for musical and well, comedy well you it's know why they could have made it a musical because of the guy with the guitar that's, That's right. right. Yeah, it's totally could've, 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 totally could have been musical. justified. Yeah. All right, what's the next category? Best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama. Kate Blanchett, Carol, Brie Larson, Brooklyn, Rooney Mara, Carol, Saoirse Ronan, Brooklyn, and Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. Um, I am honestly torn between Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara. They were both so good in this. And you know, I've loved Rooney Mara ever since we saw her in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I wasn't all that thrilled. What was the name of the movie she did with? Uh, side uh, effects. Side effects, thank you very much, with uh, Gambit there. Yeah, um, <laughs> so it was it was such, such a surprise to see her get that role and how she did it. I'm gonna lean towards Kate Blanchett though. What about you, Mark? I'm worried that there's gonna be a split between Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, a lot like what you're going through and where people might pick Brie Larson instead. I have yet to see Room, but I hear she is absolutely phenomenal in there and people enjoy when a star breaks out and gets to the next level that Rooney Mara and Kate Blanchett already are at I still think Kate Blanchett is the front runner here I'm I need to catch up on some of these movies though too so my my opinion from what I'm about to say now could change after I see everything else Alicia Vikander is absolutely spectacular in the Danish girl I think she outshines Eddie Redmayne in the movie um I think she's got a good shot to win 
All right, what's next? Best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama, Brian Cranston, Trumbo, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant, Michael Fassbender, Steve Jobs, Eddie Redmayne, The Danish Girl, and Will Smith, Concussion. It's really interesting seeing Will Smith get a, a nomination there, which which is, is nice to see. I believed it before, I still believe it. I think Michael Fassbender is going to get this, um, mm. despite the fact that it's not exactly the most beloved movie of the year at all. He just carries it. Like, he single-handedly carries it, so I'm still going to go with Fast. That is a strong list. I like seeing all those names up there. I'm still going with my boy Leo for The Revenant. I think he's winning everything besides the awards he's already not won. (laughs) I think it's it's a two-man race between Leo and Eddie Redmayne, and I think Eddie Redmayne will get it. I think that not only, and whether or not it's... This is how it should be judged or not, but I also think because of of everything that that has been happening um, this year alone with Bruce Jenner and everything too, in the way that uh, I think that this could be a movie that, for what he does, for what Eddie Redmayne does in the film, it's a powerful role. It brings a lot of information that I had never known before, and he does it. He does that same type of thing that he did when he played uh, when he when he won last year for for playing. Uh, I was gonna say Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> when he played Bill Gates. Thanks, Bill Gates. Yeah, when he won. When, Theory when, of everything. Yeah, thank you. When he won for Theory of Everything, he it he brought a lot of new information that I did not know about um, this story. Okay. So yeah, I think that I think he could um, he could win it. All right, what's next? Best Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy, The Big Short, Joy, The Martian, Spy, and Trainwreck. I'm not really sure how Joy is considered a uh, <laughs> comedy? musical or comedy. It had a couple of grins and it had De Niro a couple... made me laugh a few times, but I mean... Uh, yeah, I, I still don't understand that one myself. Look, if you're going to go... <sighs> I'm going to go with what it should be, a musical or comedy. So I'm going to say Trainwreck, because it's the only legit comedy on this entire list. The Big Short has some smiles. Joy has some smiles. The Martian has some smiles. Spy Spy is another legit one. Spy is legit. So to me, the only two real legit contenders in this category are Spy and Trainwreck. And I will go Trainwreck, although it will not win, but that's my pick. I I don't think you should be so fast to say it will not win. I think Trainwreck has a good shot of winning. It's the Golden Globes. And, That's true. And, yeah, and they love Amy Schumer right now. And the movie was really well written. I don't necessarily have said I don't necessarily love her, but I can't take away from the fact that it was a really well written movie and it was a lot of fun. And it had more heart than just being a straight up comedy. Yes, it did. As where Spy was still a good movie, had a lot more of that Paul Feig comedy in it, which is why we and went to go. And compared to the other films on the list, it had a lot more LeBron James. And LeBron James <laughs> is really funny, though. <laughs> yes, so I think was. all that stuff adds in. I think Trainwreck's going to win it. All right. I'm a fan of every film in this category, and this category is so stupid, it makes my head hurt. It (laughs) is ridiculous to call these movies comedies or musical. Never has it been more apparent to me that this category is just a backup. This is the bottom five of the best movies of the year, and they didn't have room to put The Martian or The Big Short or something else into the best picture. It is so dumb, but it's the Golden Globes, and we expect that because we all get hammered watching celebrities get even (laughs) drunker. Trainwreck has a shot. I still think it's going to be either The Big Short or The Martian because those movies deserve to be recognized more than train wreck all right next category best performance by an actress in a motion picture musical or comedy jennifer lawrence joy melissa mccarthy spy amy schumer train wreck maggie smith the lady in the van and lily tomlin grandma uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick on the same train I've been on. I'm gonna go Amy Schumer. Uh, Amy Schumer. <laughs> Amy Schumer for probably train called herself that. <laughs> yeah. For train wreck, I, that's gonna be my pick. Once again, I don't actually think she'll win, but that is my pick. <laughs> I'll say the same thing that I said to you. I don't think you should be so fast to say she's not gonna win. I think she's gonna win. I think Amy Schumer will win the, the Golden Globes. She is made for the Golden Globes. That, this, this is, is true. This, this is someone that for you're the gold for for the farm press and and everyone there that is that is voting for um for Golden Globes. It's a party. It's a big yeah. party. They're going to want her to win, and they're going to want her to give some funny, silly speech well, you know at the what? end. She's going to be the only celebrity there. Who I guarantee you this. She'll be the first That's celebrity to get one, up. That's it. She's the only one. Just one <laughs> She'll be the only one. She will get up there whenever she, it's her turn on stage, and she will roast Ricky Gervais back. Probably, and she'll be she's, bombed. Yeah, and she'll be bombed. Yeah, so I, and possibly high. I think she's going to win. Yeah. I think it's Maggie Smith versus Lily Tomlin in the <laughs> oldest fight since Grumpy Old Men. It's a combined 387 years of just pure we want to win something power. Because they'll like, be sleeping. It's a Lifetime Achievement Award for them. And Lily Tomlin and Maggie Smith both, by all accounts, gave great performances. I do agree with you guys that they, they so want Amy Schumer to get on stage somehow. She probably will end up presenting an award. And that way she can be on stage and have some yucks with Ricky Gervais. But I think it's either one of those two. 
aged hens. <laughs> <laughs> I love Maggie Smith. <laughs> aged How hens. dare you speak smack of Maggie Smith. Will someone please make a poster, <laughs> aged hens. <laughs> Please, I beg of you. It's an just, aged heads you don't, poster. You don't want to know when when you're when you're talking on <laughs> directed camera. Directed by Miller, George it, Miller. The, the way I work is that I always have a starter comment. I have a backup in case that one's too risky. <laughs> then I have a third place. That was the one that was in the hole. Yeah. And aged hens made it out. Oh man. <laughs> All right, next category. Have you seen the aged hens? <laughs> Best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. Christian Bale, The Big Short. Steve Carell, The Big Short. Matt Damon, The Martian. Al Pacino. Chino, Danny Collins, and Mark Ruffalo, Infinitely Polar Bear. Yeah, I, I'm going to admit, I haven't seen Infinitely Polar Bear. I have not seen that one, so I, it's difficult for me to comment. My pick on this is going to be Matt Damon for The Martian, because I really did think he was spectacular in the film. I think he gets overlooked for how good he actually really is in this movie, so he's my pick. But... I think a lot of people are going to count out Al Pacino. For hey, baby. <laughs> there it What's is. What's going <laughs> on? I, he was... <laughs> awesome yeah, in that he movie he was awesome in that movie so my pick is still Matt Damon but don't count out Al Pacino Mark what about you I, I like Pacino I think the big short is going to cancel each other out and you're right I want to go Damon if nothing else because again, I go back to the Martian being recognized for something and Matt Damon deserves something from the Golden Globes uh, you gotta count me out <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that Steve Carell is going to win it I think Carell was incredible in the big short and he did hit comedy moments and he did there's something about what he did in this role that i thought because he was also in that movie with ellen page this year and um julianne moore where i thought he just, he wasn't good i thought he over he overdid it and i thought he was so great in when and it was last year or two years ago when he was playing fox the, catcher. We, yeah mm -hmm. but that was yeah. like two years ago right when, when it was last year last year yeah. Yeah. and fox catcher this guy's getting so much better in everything he does. We know that he's a comedy force, but his his acting in general, I think he's going to be recognized for this. But one. here's the thing. He's a comedic actor by trade that went yeah. more serious in the big short. There were some yucks that he had for sure, but he was a serious performance. Matt Damon is a guy who we, we accept in drama and action movies. He was hilarious at parts yeah. in The yeah, Martian. Not funny enough to make the movie a comedy, right. but he still, <laughs> I, he was funnier than Steve Carell was in the big short. I know that they're very different movies. They're not both trying to get laughs, but I think Damon, that's why he gets the edge. But it's also, but it's not just about best comedy performance so it's just best performance in general I but yeah. i think i think damon's got a great shot to win all right next category best motion picture animated anomalisa the good dinosaur inside out the peanuts movie and sean the sheep movie straight up i love all these films i yeah. love and then, in a lot of years um whenever you get a best animated list it's usually two if you're lucky three that you really like and the other two are just there to fill up the space and thing these are all great. Right. We're not booing like we did with Brave when it won. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, <laughs> these are all great. And I'm still going to go. I, I'm still going with Inside Out. It's still in my top two or three favorite films of the year in general. So I'm going to go Inside Out. My emotions are conflicted right now because <laughs> I, I have made the argument that Inside Out is the best picture of the year, period. I'm kind of pulling for Peanuts now because I fell so in love with Peanuts. It's I still, so good. So I still good. think it's going to be it's Inside so Out, but I'm, I'm happy Snoopy is going to give Inside Out a run for their money. This is a great list, such a great list, and I think Inside Out is going to win. I would cheer if the Peanuts won, but I would be super happy if Shaun the Sheep pulled I knew out you were the gonna outside. Say Shaun the Sheep. I loved Shaun the Sheep. It was so good, and, it was, and I just thought it was going to be one of those movies I took my daughter to, and I'm just like kind of painfully like what I did with home just painfully yeah, getting yeah, through it yeah. I was just I forgot my daughter was there yeah go go get snacks I'm watching Shaun the Sheep it was Shaun the Sheep was great I really really enjoyed <laughs> it this, I, this, I haven't seen my daughter since snacks. This, I haven't seen her since this is a testimony to how good this list is I think Shaun the Sheep which I really enjoyed is the worst film on this list that's how good wow. this list is that's yeah. how good it is all right next category Best performance by an actress in a supporting role in any motion picture, Jane Fonda, Youth, Jennifer Jason Leigh, The Hateful Eight, Helen Mirren, Trumbo, Alicia Vikander, Ex Machina, and Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs. Gotta go uh, Helen Mirren uh, for Trumbo. She's just, she's, uh, she's automatic. She's becoming, like, look, Streep is still the queen of the hill. <laughs> Streep is still absolutely the queen of the Street hill. Streep monster. But Helen Mirren is becoming the female version 
of Daniel Day-Lewis. Whenever she appears in anything, you might as well just pencil her in on your calendar in the, when award season comes around because she always brings it. She's completely automatic. And she was amazing in Trumbo, one of the best parts of the film, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to go with Mira. If she's Mike Tyson, I'm going to say Jennifer Jason Lee is Buster <laughs> Douglas. Yeah. I think it's so exciting to see her back in the way that she has yeah. come back in The Hateful Eight. Now, full disclosure, I have not witnessed The Hateful Eight yet. I hope to see it in 70 millimeter very soon. Everything I'm hearing, all the buzz from it is that Jennifer Jason Lee is one of the standouts in a cast that is pretty damn impressive. Well, she's got the story. It seems like th this is the story that awards love to give. If it's a if it's a really great performance, that it's possible she's she could pull it out because I'm hearing the same thing that Mark's hearing is how great she is and she just blows you away and she hasn't been around for a while. And it's the same thing like last year with um, with Boyhood with Patricia Arquette. Yeah, you know she came back. People love the comeback story when there's a really good performance behind it. But I also think, and I said it before too, I think Alicia Vikander has a shot with this one as well. Ex Machina, I mean, you believe that this girl is this machine with these emotions and what she did. It's not, and it could have just been such a drab performance, and it wasn't. You 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 understood why Donald Gleason was infatuated with her. So I think it's between the two of them. All right, next category. Best performance by an actor in a supporting role <coughs> in any motion picture. Paul Dano, Love and Mercy. Idris Elba, Beasts of No Nation. Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies. Michael Shannon, 99 Homes. And Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Love that they put Sylvester Stallone in here. I, I am still, look, if I'm an Academy voter, Sylvester Stallone gets a nomination at the Academy Awards for his portrayal. Of but the winner's going to be Paul Dano. Uh, the winner's going to be Paul really? Dano for Love and Mercy. Um, so, yes, there is your winner for that. So let's just move on. We're, well, no, I'm just kidding, kidding. Mark, what do you think? You know, I, w with my heart, I definitely would vote Sylvester Stallone. But you're right, Paul Dano, I, which I saw recently, Love and Mercy, he's just phenomenal as Brian Wilson, where it's great to see Beast of No Nation get recognized by somebody like the Golden Globes, as we mentioned yesterday. Yeah. Mark Rylance was amazing yeah, was as the maybe spy, spy, yeah. spy but uh, I think Paul Dano is going to win but my god I want to see Sylvester it Stone reminds you when you watch Love and Mercy it reminds you that oh yeah uh, there will be blood wasn't just Daniel Day Lewis like you forget how good Paul Dano was in that because he's acting alongside arguably the greatest right. actor to ever walk the face of the earth and then you get to see him shine a little bit more here. And yeah, it really stood out to me. It, yeah, I, I have to see. I have it at home and I need to watch it because I, I hear he's so good in it. But I was, I'm was, i still looking at the list, waiting for Benicio Del Toro for Sicario. Sicario to yeah. <laughs> Where, where's he and where's Tom Hardy from The Revenant? But they're not in there. Do, who do I want to win? Stallone, hands down, want to see Stallone win. I think that actually it, uh, Paul Dano has a really good shot, but I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Shannon pulls it off too. Oh, yeah, he was really do good. Don't count out Shannon Michael Shannon. There. Although I, I the like the quality of the movie. It, Love and Mercy is but, such a better film than 99 for Homes us, but, that I but, think it gives it the edge. For us, uh, that that's the key. But a lot of other people and critics loved that movie. So it, that. Did they really? I know. They loved it. So wow. I, I think that it's a matter of, uh, you know, who don't count him out. Although I would have liked to see him been nominated for the, the one he just did uh, the night before. Oh, right, <laughs> right, right. 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 <laughs> Talking about musical and comedy, where was the night before? All right, final Skunks. category. Best Director, Motion Picture. Todd Haynes, Carol. Alejandro Inarritu, The Revenant. Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. George Miller, Mad Max, Fury Road. And Ridley Scott, The Martian. <sighs> I am... Wow. Good choice. Totally low. This is the most loaded category this year. Yeah. Last couple of years has been the best lead actor category, has been the most loaded year, the most packed year, the, the, the year where there's going to be some very, some guys who directed films that in any other year would have gotten an Academy Award nomination, but this year there just ain't room at the end. Look at this list. It's, I mean, it's, look at it's this. It's one of the best lists I've ever like, seen. Like Ridley Scott deserves a Gold Globe. He deserves an Academy Award for what he did with The Martian. But he directed it, unfortunately, in the same year that George Miller directed Mad Max. And more importantly, he directed it in the same year that Tom McCarthy directed Spotlight. And I, I, when you just look at the direction of Spotlight, I talked about this the other day. That is a movie that could have gotten out of hand very quickly with the amount of characters, the amount of facts, the amount of information constantly flying. McCarthy found a way to tell that story in a paced, deliberate, coherent way that just brought you along with it the entire time. Miller deserves an Oscar, Ridley deserves an Oscar, Alejandro deserves another Oscar, Todd Haynes deserves another Oscar, but unfortunately only one can get it. Uh, and we're talking about the Golden Globes here, but it's gonna be McCarthy. 
They all deserve it. Yeah, they do. It's, it, what a list for sure. But I think that, I mean, I totally agree with you what you're saying because you watch The Revenant though and you watch yeah. the way Inuritu you know, you know, directs and the performances he gets out of both DiCaprio and Hardy and the, the working with his cinematographer who should be recognized as well too. It, it's a simple story, but he makes it, it's just, you're in it. You're, you're there the way he transports you. But what you're saying with Spotlight, is, I think is what nailed it, is to take all those personalities, tell that story that could have easily been like, well, this is so deep and I feel so kind of dirty Heavy watching and it. Dense and, and, um, yeah. But I didn't, I felt like, I, I felt like a, a hope and a fact that, that, that you know, and an encouragement to the media of, of to be used for good and the way he told this story and the way he used his actors and just like you're saying, the pacing of it. So I would have to say he should get the, the win. I mean, it seems like, and from what a lot of us are picking, too, is that we're leaning towards movies that have a little something to say that's either political or social, and while all these films have that in their theme somewhere, it's most obvious in Spotlight and Carol. I think Spotlight would get the tiebreaker over Carol. Having said all that, I still think what Inaratu did with The Revenant and what George Miller did with Mad Max, yeah. those are the two ones that I would love to see. So I'm going to go ahead and guess with my heart, I'm going to say Inaratu wins for The Revenant. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.